Brothers and sisters, we welcome you this evening to our spotlight on Elder David A. Bednar. We're grateful to have you all with us this evening and we'd like to follow a different format. We're going to have an informal discussion on four key areas of Elder Bednar's life. Firstly, biographical information and uh, secondly, some lessons that we've learned from his examples. We will be talking about some interests and hobbies that he has and some key and meaningful teachings that he has taught in recent conference addresses. We'll start off with uh, learning a little bit more about Elder Bednar's life. Elder Bednar was born on the 15th of June 1952 in Oakland, California. He served as a full-time missionary in southern Germany and then attended Brigham Young University where he received a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. He also received a doctoral degree in organizational behavior from Purdy University. After completing his education, Elder Bednar was a professor of business management at Texas Tech University and at the University of Arkansas. He then served as a president of Brigham Young University, Idaho, formerly Ricks College from 1997 to 2004. Elder Bednar married Susan K. Robertson in the Salt Lake Temple on the 20th of March 1975 and they are the parents of three sons. Some of the callings that Elder Bednar had, he was ordained and set apart as a member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints on the 7th of October 2004. Prior to his call to the Quorum of the Twelve, Elder Bednar served as an Area 70 Area Authority 70, Regional Representative, twice as a stake president and as a bishop. Quite hectic callings for a young man. I think it's interesting that uh, as you were speaking there I noticed he was the administrator of Ricks College as it changed over to BYU Idaho and it must have been an interesting time because the college moved from a junior college where you would just go to start your degree program and then move on to finishing college. There must have been some unique challenges that he had to face during that, that period. Yeah, one of the things I picked up is, you know, Elder Bednar is effectively similar age to our parents. So the counsel that, that he is providing is effectively counsel that uh, he be, could be providing to, to us, you know, as a, as a grandparent. And, uh, you know, we look at our grandparents and, you know, we see how wise they are. Similarly with, with Elder Bednar, he, he is definitely a wise man. Yeah, but look at his occupation. He has a list of occupations and, and a list of degrees that he has under his belt. And I think that to a large degree has prepared him in his life to teach, especially coming from a part member family where he was able to convert and baptize his father. That must have been a great experience and possibly even difficult for him growing up and having to wonder why his dad probably didn't understand the same principles that he held so dear, especially while he was served on mission. But I think Heavenly Father knows the beginning from the end and I think he knew that Elder the Bednar needed to have gone through that process and experience all of those things to to be who he is today. You know, one, one can never say that he was shortchanged from having an example of, of a man of integrity and uh, having a work ethic. His father, being a man, worked as a, a tradesman and a tool and die maker. For anyone that has had or known anyone that with a similar skill knows the precision that's required and there's no compromise. And I can tell you that, uh, you know, Elder Bednar is one that does not compromise. His grounding in the gospel is one of pure conviction and I think you know that that foundation is what has helped him be the leader that he is. We often see Elder Bednar in, in light of his church responsibilities but you know with this presentation we've been allowed to to enter into his personal life to find out what sort of person he is at home and I think there, there could be no better person to tell us a little bit about that than, than his wife. As I was researching some of the examples that he portrays, I went and did some, some reading on the church's official biography for Elder Bednar. And right there, his wife states that people who know him, know him well, would say that he's tough and tender. 
that is competent and compassionate. He's driven yet discerning. He's faithful and fearless. He has a great capacity to lead and the wisdom to follow. The comments that are researched about his sons, how they saw him as a father. The first was his son Michael, who said that it seems that faith has driven out fear in my dad. He's always optimistic and no matter what goes wrong he always says, things will work out. Jeff, his other son, dad is an ordinary man who can do extraordinary things because of the strength of the Lord. And he's a living witness of the enabling power of the atonement. One of the things that stuck out for me was when he, he was teaching his son that principle of, of hard work. I think his son was on mission. and Yes, he was having a tough time on mission. That's right. And he told his son that he just needed to work hard and that the success would come. And after that, he said that he need, once the success had come, he needed to remember that Heavenly Father had given it to him and that he hadn't earned it. And I thought that was a fantastic lesson to... To, to teach our children that all that, that we have and all that we receive come from Heavenly Father. It's an example of humility. And as we referred earlier to the fact that he took over in his new position as administrator, uh, there's a, an extract that mentions that when he was meeting with faculty and staff, he said, I've never been a president of a college before. I don't know how to do this, but I do know some things about teaching and I hope that foundation will at least provide a beginning. Elder Bednar has shown to me and has been an example to me of faith in trusting in the Lord and understanding of how if you leave your faith in the Lord and trust in his guiding hand, that things will work out. Another great example that Elder Bednar taught me was specifically summed up in the comments of his son Eric who describes his father like this he says he has always gone to the real source the words of the prophet and the scriptures he is bold but he listens he will ask inspired questions and then listen for your answer and then he will ask another inspired question once he was giving me something similar to a temple recommend interview when I was about 14 years old he asked me if I sustained President Ezra Taft Benson, and I said I did. And then after a pause, he asked, what have you read lately of what President Benson said? I think he was teaching us and his son at the time a key principle. And that's something that we've, we've learned in this course and something that I, I believe the, the purpose of these spotlights are. And that is to not only just believe that the apostles and prophets are, are our leaders and, and servants of the Lord appointed, but to study their words and, and then to live by their words. You know, one of the things that, that I've, I've picked up is, you know, we, we can't just accept, you know, the things that are said. We need to check to make sure that the, the sources that, that we are reviewing are good sources, you know, that the right information is taught to us. And I think one thing that uh, all of us need to do is, is to make sure that what we are reading is true. And, you know, we're fortunate to, to know a pattern that we can come to a knowledge of the truthfulness of these things. And I think, you know, as we've, we've learned from a general conference, um, as one of the, the general authorities shared, that we need to, to come prepared. Um, I can't recall exactly what... Uh, what that statement was. I don't know if you can. Something to the effect of come with your brain. brain. Yes, bring your brains. Bring, bring your, your brains, brains when you come to conference. You know, and the, the onus is on us to prepare ourselves spiritually that we can take in those things taught. You know, these brethren have put in the preparation with the Lord to f find out those things that we should be hearing. And it's our responsibility to make the pre preparation that our hearts can be taught. I think a great important thing as well is that uh, with this preparation uh, comes the support structure that needs to be in place and that the brings family. us brings us to the family yes and uh, and and to recreational pursuits and hobbies and interests yeah. you can definitely see that if you have a look at his children his children are all very successful so well the bed and i definitely taught them how to bring their brains he to me has been a a fantastic example of what it is to be a great father and a great husband and 
a great granddad. Aldo Bedna enjoys many hobbies and interests, which include golfing, skiing, he, he's an art collector, he watches college basketball and football games, and they enjoy having ice cream parties with their grandchildren. He also enjoys going to the beach as well as the mountains and as a family they make sure that they enjoy a, a family vacation each year. I think his grandchildren feel that they are the luckiest grandchildren in the world because their grandparents run a grandma and grandpa camp where the eldest grandchildren get to stay over at their grandparents house without their parents and they go get to go skiing and making crafts and enjoying the sightseeing of Salt Lake City. One of the things that uh, one can clearly pick up is the competitive nature. You know, we, we sort of hear about all these, uh, these sporting interests and, you know, I don't think there can be a person what, that watches sport without wanting to, to play to win. And I think that drive, you know, direct in the right way, you know, can be a great motivation for, for any young man. Sister Bednar actually often speaks of feeling very outnumbered as far as uh, competitiveness in sport is concerned. And she wished that she had um, daughters and is very grateful that she has been able to welcome uh, daughter-in-laws into, into their family. And their family's grown from that. That's right. They have 12 grandchildren, 10 of which are boys and two are girls. And their favorite, the, their grandchildren are the lights of their lives. They really enjoy spending a lot of time with them. Elder Bednar enjoys uh, watching his granddaughters play princess parades. And he enjoys shooting hoops with his, his youngest grandson. So That's sport good. has been a big part of their lives. That's I mean, right. even from when he was at school as a high school's quarterback. That's right. I think that uh, that, that particular skill, his uh, grandchildren are appreciative of. Yeah, he met his wife like that. They were at a family home evening when they were in young single adults and they were playing a game of flag football where Sister Bednar and Elder Bednar were put in the same team and Sister Bednar caught one of, one of his passes. He was so impressed by that and he recalls that it was the only pass that he remembers her ever catching and has never caught another pass since. You know, the, one can only but think of the eternal nature and that of that uh, particular pass. You know, I always, I always think to myself, what if she had dropped it? You know, would he have had the, the same resolve to, to end up marrying her? Well, you know, that's just a bit of humour, I suppose, sure I, in, in a, a history of many happy years of marriage. I think Elder Bednar would have put his uh, one of his favourite principles into action there. It says, don't worry, no matter what goes wrong. Things will always work out. Yeah, he would have picked the ball up and asked her out anyway. Yep. <laughs> you know, one one of the things that uh, you know I, I remember Albert not sharing in in a talk was, you know, about how you know even with these three sons they had the challenges that many of us experience in our in our own own life. Um, you know, many times I think you know we think we're unique in uh, in you know having our children. You know, direct affairs in the home, and you know, he and his wife had similar challenges. There was a quote I liked by Elder Bednar. He said, There are some things that are nice, there are a few things that are absolutely necessary. And he said, Of career accomplishments being low in priority to family. And just like all the other apostles, their biggest priority is the family. We can learn some great lessons from the apostles, and specifically, I guess, if we review and concentrate on their talks in general conference uh, you know the family is the basis of everything we do in our lives it's what we work for it's what we we uh, remain true and faithful for it's the the goal that all of us have that we one day as families can be together forever and you know as as long as that serves as motivation to us you know things are, are good and uh, you know one can only say that you know, Elder Bednar practices what he preaches. It's the truth of what this life is all about. And it's the truth of what we will one day enjoy, you know, when we return back to live with our Heavenly Father. You know, some of the, the other things that Elder Bednar shared um, at uh, General Conference was the, the blessing of tithing. And uh, this was shared in a talk entitled The Windows of Heaven. He discussed 
the, the fact that you know we have temporal and spiritual blessings applicable through living this law and he specifically went into the fact that you know while the recognizable blessings are important and you know we can appreciate them because we can see them you know openly the the subtle ones are the ones that are, are motivating that keep us you know on the right path of remaining true and faithful to to this very principle he shared the fact that you know these these subtle blessings can be that we are empowered to identify opportunities that others might overlook that we will search harder and longer than other people are willing to do uh, we may have a greater capacity to act and change our own circumstances than rather waiting for someone else to to change our circumstances he spoke about you know being able to do more with less and having a keen uh, ability to prioritize and simplify our lives he went on to speak about an enhanced ability to take proper care of our material possessions that we already have acquired. I think that's uh, something that leads to the next part of that talk, which was regarding how the church practices those same principles in the way it's run. And, and uh, I think he must have been interested to, to see that in action as he joined the Council of the Twelve Apostles and, and was assigned to to sit in those meetings which determine what happens with the funds of the church and how the church operates. Definitely. You know, he, he spoke about the fact that the church, you know, has two main principles that it lives by. You know, the first being that it does not spend more than it receives. And secondly, the, the fact that the church sets aside a portion of the annual income as reserved for contingencies and unanticipated needs. And, uh, you know, one can only just look at how this blessing you know has been realized uh, for so many people all over the world as the church has been the first to to be there to aid and assist you know families when they've been affected by the calamities and disasters of the world and you know for myself you know this very principle you know has has been a great blessing in our lives i think of where we started out when we first got married to where we are right now and i can't pinpoint specifics but I can see the hand of the Lord as he has blessed us. And I look back and uh, I have fond memories. I would never want to change anything. And so, you know, as we, we honor and sustain the Lord, so, you know, we will be blessed. You know, just as Elder Bednar has been blessed in his life and he continues to be able to lead and guide us to, to similar blessings. What I liked when Elder Bednar was called as a stake president, Sister Bednar said she was at a young age with three small children and at first she used to write down all the times that Elder Bednar was away serving. She said that it was very difficult for her and he was away when the boys were sick and when she needed him at home. But as time went on, she changed her attitude. She stopped recording the hours he was away. She learned to support Elder Bednar with all her heart, might and mind. After she had changed her attitude, it became easier and Elder Bednar could feel of her love and support. There's another story when Elder Bednar was serving as the bishop. He had the story of the red suspenders. He said, I went into primary one Sunday. They had invited me. I decided to wear red suspenders. I thought that I would somehow use them as an object lesson. So I got in the primary room, took off my coat and said, Now, boys and girls, the bishop has his red suspenders. How are the scriptures like my red suspenders? One little boy raised his hand and said, The scriptures hold up our faith in Jesus the same way your suspenders hold up your pants. I said that is exactly right. The little boys in the ward started wearing red suspenders and the little girls had red bows in their hair. Brothers and sisters, we're grateful for the opportunity we have had to share this spotlight on Elder David A. Bednar with you. We would hope that all of us would wear our red suspenders to hold up our faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ as we follow great men like Elder David A. Bednar.